Hey Steve, you know, I'm super excited to talk about this new blockbuster type 2 diabetes drug, but what's it called again? I'm excited too. It's called Buongiorno. Wow. What, wait, what, what did you just say? Jeremy, it's called Buongiorno. You know, that, that seems kind of fun. I think I'm going to give it a, a chance here. <clears throat> Mangiaro. Did it work? No. All right, so we're not in Italy, but we're still very excited to be talking about this new blockbuster drug, Manjaro. So welcome to a dose of Dr. E and Dr. P. So Steve, tell us a little bit about what this drug is. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing addition to our type two diabetes armamentarium. Now we've had drugs like Ozembic, Trulicity, which are excellent, what we call GLP-1 receptor agonists. Sorry about all these letters, but that's the best way to describe them. And this new medication not only stimulates the GLP-1 receptor agonist receptors, but it also stimulates another natural hormone found in the human body called GIP. Ready for this? Glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide. I will not repeat that again. But it turns out that <clears throat> when the folks at Lilly, the scientists, uh, were testing this compound, they realized that it was extremely potent in terms of bringing the A1C down, <clears throat> excuse me, and weight. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's basically activating two hormones with a single injection uh, that you can give once a week. So, um, you know, the clinical effects on, on, from this drug have really, like, you, you can't overstate them, yeah. you know, in terms of what they're doing for reducing A1C, what they're doing for weight. We are not exaggerating when we say we just haven't seen anything like this. Um, you know, certainly since I've been in diabetes, and I don't know about you, people keep using words like game changer and paradigm shifting, and it really probably is. I don't know. Do you have thoughts? Yeah. Now, now, once again, we do have the high-dose GLP-1 medications, which are extremely good, <clears throat> and the higher-dose ones haven't been studied directly against Monjaro. <laughs> However, um, our armamentarium is pretty damn impressive, and I do think that it's going to come down to, with this new medication, uh, access and adherence, mm -hmm. getting it in your hands and then taking it over the long term, which is a problem in the type 2 population. Yeah, that's all of you folks out there. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit specifically <clears throat> about some of the clinical trial results. So it's been studied extensively in what they call the SURPASS studies. In thousands of people with type 2 diabetes, and we're going to talk about also in, in people with just obesity without type 2 diabetes. Um, and they studied it in various combinations with people on metformin or if they're on basal insulin. And regardless of, of the actual specific population, when it came to people with type 2 diabetes, um, the reductions in A1C were consistently profound. So in these studies, people started with an A1C around 8 to 8.5. And, and what kind of A1C reductions did they get? Yeah. <clears throat> there there's a range, but 2 to 2.5 percent drop <clears throat> to, to the area where folks were in the mid 6 percent range. And the goal, of course, the ideal goal is less than 7, and we know that um, a minority of Americans have their A1Cs below 7. And what I found that was, you know, the most impressive is that when they originally showed data on this, they actually showed people that got their A1C down to less than 5.7. Why is that normal number important? <laughs> That's normal. Yeah. Uh, when you look at someone's A1C, anything less than 5.7 is defined as normal. So in, in all the clinical trials we've seen, they usually report the number of patients that got their A1C down less than 7. But actually now showing that there's a significant amount of people that go on this drug that, uh, you know, technically are in the non-diabetic range. Yeah, and it turns out that I don't, I've never seen a company coming out with a new drug that tries to show that data. Less than seven, less than 6.5 is the lowest. So mm -hmm. it's, it's shocking, actually. So, and what about weight loss? So we mentioned that, you know, another effect of this is weight loss. So in uh, the, the, the type 2 diabetes trials, we're seeing weight loss that's on par with what you might actually see in, in bariatric surgeries. And the average weight loss from the, the type 2 studies was somewhere around 20 to 30 pounds, depending on how much you kind of had to lose, um, you know, 15 to 20 percent of people's body weight. Yeah, and it's, uh, there's three doses, you know, 5, 10, and 15. So the, there's a lot of results from the four different for, surpassed studies, but the weight loss is also greater than any other medication we have seen. Mm -hmm. 
And you were talking about in the, in the studies they did specifically in people with obesity, that what was the average weight loss? You're yeah, saying? you're not going to believe this, but on the higher dose of Monjaro, uh, 23% of their body weight. So they started off at about 250 pounds and they lost on average 50 pounds. Some people lost more. Now think about that. Yeah. And the, and it turns out that many of the folks in this large study and people without diabetes had pre-diabetes based on their glucose values and the vast majority of those folks reverted to normal. So real quick, some practical things. So it, it comes in a once a week pen that looks very similar to the Trulicity pen if people have used it. You start at two and a half milligrams once a week and you generally do a, a dose each a dose change each month. You can get up to the maximum dose of 15 milligrams, which may take up to six months actually to titrate it. But we titrate it very slowly to reduce the side effects. The main side effect being nausea, uh, but with similar rates of nausea compared to our other GLP ones. Yeah, and I think you know, it's not a sprint; it's a marathon when you're treating type two, and the last thing you want is to develop nausea. So I'll tell you what. <clears throat> the results on the five and the 10 milligram dose were impressive. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wait five weeks to see a benefit. You'll see it in the first week. You'll start to see things improve in the first week. And you know, for more information, there's a really nice article on our website uh, with a lot more data. And then you just did a very recent lecture with Dr. Tris Santos um, that'll move to our video vault, I think July 3rd, it, you said, right? Yeah, that's right. And so check that out on, on a lot more specifics about it. But for now, we're just really excited that this is, it, we should say, has been FDA approved and it's hitting pharmacies very, very shortly, if it, not already now. Yeah, so it's, you, it's not approved for folks with type 1 yet, but um, you never know. Right now, it's approved only for people with type 2 diabetes. And then the company did that big study in people without type 2 but had weight problems. And they will probably get the indication for general old weight problems, whether you have type 2 or not. Cool. Well, I guess for now, I'm just going to have to book my flight to Italy and go kind of the old-fashioned way. Um, but thanks for doing this with me. <laughs> Since so long, everybody. Bonjour. <laughs>